It's all in how you perceive it. You're in control. Do not waste the rest of your life speculating about others in ways that are not to your mutual advantage. Think of all that might be accomplished in the time you throw away, distracted from the voice of your own true and reasonable self, wondering what the next man is up to and why, what he's saying or thinking or plotting. Purge your mind of all aimless and idle thoughts, especially those that pry into the affairs of others or wish them ill. You're better off not giving the small things more time than they deserve. Everyone dreams of the perfect vacation in the country, by the sea, or in the mountains. You, too long to get away and find that idyllic spot. Yet, how foolish, when at any time you are capable of finding that perfect vacation in yourself. Nowhere is there more an idyllic spot, a vacation home more private and peaceful than in one's own mind. It's silly to try to escape other people's faults. They are inescapable. Just try to escape your own. The happiness of those who want to be popular depends on others. The happiness of those who seek pleasure fluctuates with moods outside their control. But the happiness of the wise grows out of their own free acts. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Don't hanker after what you don't have. Instead, fix your attentions on the finest and best that you have, and imagine how much you would long for these if they weren't in your possession. At the same time, don't become so attached to these things that you would become distraught if you were to lose them. One thing alone troubles me, the thought that I might do what my true self does not will, or that I might do what it wills in the wrong way, or at the wrong time. It's unfortunate that this has happened. No, it's fortunate that this has happened, and I've remained unharmed. Persuade me or prove to me that I am mistaken in thought or deed, and I will gladly change, for it is the truth I seek, and the truth never harmed anyone. Harm comes from persisting in error and clinging to ignorance. Whenever someone has done wrong by you, immediately consider what notion of good or evil they had in doing it. For when you see that, you'll feel compassion instead of astonishment or rage. Is it not better simply to do what is necessary and no more, to limit yourself to what reason demands? This adds to the happiness of doing few things and the satisfaction of having done them well. 
Most of what we say and do is unnecessary anyway. Subtract all that lot and look at the time and contentment you'll gain. There are three kinds of men in this world. The first, when he helps someone out, makes it known that he expects something in return. The second would never be so bold, but in his mind he knows what he has done and considers the other person to be in his debt. The third somehow doesn't realize what he has done but he's like a vine that bears fruit and asks nothing more than the pleasure of producing grapes. A horse gallops, a dog hunts, a bee makes honey, one man helps another, and the vine bears fruit in due season. You ought to be like that third fellow who does good without giving it a second thought. Often, injustice lies in what you aren't doing, not only in what you are doing. The best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Why do you hesitate or second-guess yourself when you know perfectly well what ought to be done? If you know where you need to go, Make a considerate but determined effort to get there. If you don't, wait and seek the best advice you can find. Relaxed but alert, cheerful but determined. Such is reason's faithful follower. Just do the right thing. The rest doesn't matter. This is the mark of perfection of character, to spend each day as if it were your last, without frenzy, laziness, or any pretending 